Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live 10 at 10. A wall cloud slowly moving along the sky over southeast North Dakota in the area of Oaks and Lemoore. This is part of the unstable weather that for many in southeastern North Dakota have been experiencing tonight. And this is what we watched from our sky cam about 40 minutes ago. It's looking northwest of Fargo into Cass County, part of a severe thunderstorm warning. There's a low cloud and as you saw, a short uh, shot of lightning or two. Now there's a lot of this going on, but not everyone in our Valley News Live viewing area has seen this kind of weather tonight. Thanks for joining us. Now the worst of it may have been a strong storm in northern Stutzman County and Foster counties where they had hail up to one and a half inches in size. Let's begin with the very latest from Hutch, whose storm team has been on task all night. Hutch? Thank you very much, Mike. We have had reports of very large hail from these cells. They were isolated in nature earlier in the evening when we talked at our last broadcast, become a little more widespread. Here's a photo shared with one of our Facebook friends, Pam Didi. This is near Pingree. Take a look at the size of that greater than two inch diameter hail and some of it quite sharp and jagged as uh, conglomerates gathered together inside the clouds. Another example of that was in Lamore County, about five miles west. Thank you, Tammy, for sharing your photos of hail. The severe weather does continue. A strong storm has just seen the severe thunderstorm warning expire down in Sargent County, but the storm that's to the north of us moving in Norman County right now that has produced wall clouds and very large hail upwards of an inch and a half in diameter is continuing to show quite strong hail potential. Here's a look at the very latest. Moving through southern portions of Norman County, it's capable of one and a half inch diameter hail as it moves east at 21 miles per hour. There are more strong Strong storms across our northern counties, especially up in the Northern Valley, Northwest Minnesota and Polk County. A storm making its way toward the Highway 2 corridor could be capable of one inch diameter hail as well. We'll keep you updated with the very latest right here, but it has been a very busy evening. And as we go through the overnight, I do expect things to quiet down. All right, thanks so much, Hutch. You can stay up to date on the changing weather conditions anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just download the Storm Team Weather app to get the very latest weather conditions and even follow the radar live. Just keep and search for VNL Weather in the App Store. We have breaking news now about a plane crash that has claimed the lives of two people. Authorities have confirmed the deaths of a Grigla area couple killed Monday in a plane crash in British Columbia, Canada. The two have been identified as Jim and Gloria Holty. The couple left Alberta yesterday morning and failed to arrive for their second fuel stop. The wreckage of the aircraft was spotted last night in British Columbia. We'll return now to a Valley News Live exclusive, a terrifying account of what happened during that deadly Grand Forks Walmart shooting last week from the woman who survived it. Lisa Braun was shot in the shoulder and is recovering at home after being released from the hospital. Now, another Walmart employee, Greg Wyland, was shot and killed. The shooter, Grand Forks Airman Marshall Willis, took his own life after shooting Wyland and Braun. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson has Braun's eyewitness account of the shooting. Police say it happened within seconds after the shooter, Marcel Willis, walked into this Walmart. Lisa Braun says she was standing next to Greg Wyland near the front of the store. Yeah, I, really, I didn't see a gun, and I heard a shot. And it missed me. I must have ducked or tried to move out of the way. And he shot again and he hit me in the shoulder. And, you know, a second later, that's when he shot at Greg and hit him. Just turned around and was like walking towards the deli. And that's where he shot at the other associates, which he missed. And then I assume that's where he shot himself. Braun says she clearly remembers the terrifying expression on the shooter's face. She says his face was so contorted, she couldn't even recognize him compared to the photos of him she saw on television. It's crazy. It's like, not normal. I mean, I've worked at Walmart for a long time, and I've never, you know, been afraid or feared anything. But the look on his face, it was definitely... It was not right. Brown says the shooter, Marcel Willis, also did a bizarre thing while all this was happening. Each time before pulling the trigger, he would yell a word. Each time that he, before he fired, he yelled a word. I don't remember what it was, but I heard him yell that word, and I heard the gun shot, and I don't know what happened after that. 
At this point, no one yet knows what motivated Marcel Willis to commit this senseless act that's left Lisa Braun a bit scared of the world. A little bit. Because I think about it once in a while, you know, if I'm out, you know, you, don't, you never know if it can happen again. In Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Police say the preliminary toxicology report on the shooter, Marcel Willis, will be released tomorrow morning. That should determine whether Willis was under the influence of drugs or alcohol at the time of the shooting. Meanwhile, we're told that extra security has been temporarily added at both Grand Forks Walmart stores. For more than a decade, a piece of high-level congressional report allegedly showing ties between 9-11 terrorists and the Saudi Arabian government has been classified. Now, U.S. Senator Rand Paul is teaming up with some Kentucky House members to push for the public release of these pages. Lawmakers say the information inside the 2002 intelligence report relates to who financed the 9-11 attacks and points a strong finger at Saudi Arabia exposing new details in the terrorism plot that killed nearly 3,000. This is what it comes down to, 28 pages. Members of Congress who read the report said that they had to go to a special classified room to even look at the document. The 28 pages were classified by President George W. Bush. Now the decision to declassify the report is up to President Barack Obama. And the White House says it's reviewing the request. A first-of-its-kind power approach in North Dakota aims at taking and going green. The Prairie Sun Community Solar is a community solar panel project and spearheaded by Cass County Electric Cooperative. Valley News Team's Krista Bame looks into if your investment is worth the cost. An open field in Fargo will soon be covered with an array of solar panels if enough people are willing to front the cash. 70% of the panels are, are, are committed to we will then move forward with the project this fall, hopefully. <laughs> the project consists of 252 panels. A half panel will cost you $835. Each full panel, $1,670. It not only generates power, but energy credits that benefit you for the next quarter century. We wanted to know, is the payoff actually worth it? $50 credit per year. You know, that's about what they'll say by investing into a panel. The thing about solar energy is it is more expensive than our cost today. So let's do the math. $50 times 25 years. You'd earn $1,250 over the 25 years. That's a little over $400, less than your original investment. But Albright says the idea behind solar panel projects isn't all about the cost. One of the reasons why people buy solar is not necessarily for the payback necessarily, it's, it's to be green, it's to support the environment, and that's really the people that will buy into the program. So the choice is yours. Do you want to spend more green to be greener? Krista Bame, Valley News Live. Cass County Electric Cooperative says a few people have already signed up. If you're interested or want to learn more, go to our website, valleynewslive.com, and click on this story.